Okay, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Vuti. Welcome to another series of our Nature Hero Talks. And uh, this week, we're very privileged to have Sarah with us. And um, we're just waiting for a few more people to come in before we start. Yeah, well, while we are waiting, maybe if you could help to type in uh, uh, into the chat box where you're from, actually. We have quite a number of people from all over the place. And we'd like to extend our warm welcome, of course, to our uh, Singaporean friends, uh, Nature Society of Singapore, uh, led by Professor uh, Sean Lam. So welcome, and thanks for inviting all your colleagues to join us. Yeah, so from Singapore next time, next year, hopefully uh, we will still have the Raptor Watch going on. Uh, you, when you come next year, you can actually plan a bit earlier, come and visit the, obs ob come and visit the observatory. And at the same time, we can do a bit of birding in, uh, in the Greece Timberland as well. We have some forests here we can show you around. And um, of course, the, the river cruises, the, the fireflies, along the, um, the Sungai Lingi River area. Okay, so on that note, I will hand the mic to our host of the day, Harris. Uh, over to you, Harris, thank you. Right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Budi. Uh, so welcome to yet another uh, Nature Hero Talks by uh, Malaysian Nature Society. Over the past weeks, we had talks on butterflies, we had talks on mangroves, we had talks on terrapins. Today, we have another interesting talk. Uh, today, we're, gone, we're going beyond the skies. Today, we are talking about astronomy. So today, we are pleased to have uh, Chek Sarah Nodin with us. Uh, Chek Sarah is from the Tlok Kamak Observatory, which is located at the Klana Beach Resort. Okay, this observatory houses the largest telescope in Malaysia and is the only telescope, the only observatory that is open to public Right, so Sarah is uh, the science officer at the observatory. Uh, she's a graduate from uh, University Technology Mara, majoring in physics, and she's the uh, permanent staff of the observatory. All right, so Sarah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Aris. All right, Sarah, over to you. Take it away. Oh, thank you, Roger, Roger, and out. Uh, so, hello, hi everyone, good afternoon. So, my name is Siti Sarah, you can call me Sarah. So, I'm one of the officers introduced by Haris. I'm one of the officers um, in Telukama Observatory. In here, we have two staff. Me and other one is my uh, assistant manager of Telukama Observatory, Encik Muzami Mazran. So, first, I, I would like to say thank you to Malaysian uh, Nature Society, Melaka, Negeri Sembilan Branch for inviting to look come out observatory as a speaker for this. I have been watched the the series on the Facebook. I hope everyone will like this this one also. This one is actually nature is on the earth, but this one is outer space. It's still nature. It's still nature. So I guess Harris and everyone in here um, love nature. And what an astronomy about is also about nature, but and we also have something that we want to preserve, which is which is the sky, and what we were going to preserve is from uh, pollution. We, we also have a uh, type of pollution which is uh, light pollution, and so today is more like a sharing session. So in case you have any question or any. Um, mm -hmm. Something to say, so you can chat on the chat box. So I would like to start first. So in here we have um, today we have uh, four uh, main topic, which is first a step closer. A step closer is a, like a uh, introduction to the Lokama Observatory, and second we're gonna focus on astrophotography, which is I'm gonna share some of photos that taken from here. And the third one is uh, about incoming 
our upcoming astronomy phenomena. And the last one, we have quizzes. And we have prices for you guys. So I'm going to show you some of prices. Top three, uh, top three. Uh, you guys going to get this one. It's a um, limited edition of collection of picture from Tulak Kemal Observatory. This one. And a set of uh, fresh magnet and kitchens. So this one is the price. We got three set for top three. And another two set of uh, which is you can um, admissions tickets to Tulak Kemal Observatory for the fourth and fifth place. So I hope you guys uh, can stay focused. Yeah, don't, don't worry, this, this, this one is not a lecture or something. Okay, um, so this one is a big history about our place. So in early 80s, Teluk Kemal Observatory only known as a place to do a new moon observation. Or we call Tengok Anak Bulan in Malay. So this one is the place to determine the new days of Ramadan, when Muslim gonna start their fasting, or when we gonna celebrate Eid. So this one is the place. Why Teluk Kemal is for, um, too uh, popular? Because we are famously known uh, to record the most appearance of the new moon. So after this, I'm gonna show you uh, what is new moon. So facilities and equipment of Teluk Kemang Observatory was upgraded to develop astronomy knowledge through the various activities and studies. So for your information, this place is, I can see we, our aims and our goals is to encourage people uh, to love astronomy. Uh, we have a lot of observatory, so why we are different from other observatory? First, um, we are the only observatory with modern facilities that open to public every day, every single day. We never close unless um, recently we got COVID, so we need to close because of COVID. Before this, we never close. We open daily for, for public to come and uh, give them experience how to use telescope, how how they feel to, to see the moon and uh, sun using their own eyes. So usually because other places got telescope too, but sometimes it's only open, uh, occasionally depends on astronomical uh, phenomena. And we are, I can see that Teluk Kamau Observatory is quite young. We only fully operational from 2012. So this one is uh, roughly about this place. Uh, we have six floors. Yes, we have six floors. And uh, maybe some of you have come or have not come in here. We don't have any lift or elevator. Uh, so next time, bear in mind, before you come to here, you need to, I think you need to eat a lot because you need to climb six floor. So why we don't have any leaf or elevator? Because uh, any vibration can affect the telescope. The bigger the telescope, the sensitive it will be. So that's why there's no elevator in here. So we need to climb this floor. So with, uh, with these two six floors, we have two domes. So main dome at the sixth floor and solar dome at the third floor. And we have two visiting hours that we open daily that I will discuss after this. So this one is the facilities uh, in Tulukama Observatory. So we have ground floor, we got theater room. Maybe some of you have come in here. Theater room can occupy 40 to 50 uh, people in one time. So usually if we receive success uh, request from group of MNS to come in here, usually we're gonna have a, like a briefing session on the theater room. We got observation deck and gallery. In gallery, we have a sequence of planets on the ceilings. And the first floor, we have uh, observation deck. This one is only open for new moon observation. And this one is the second floor, working room. This is where Haris right now. And the third floor, we have solar observatory. Okay, I'm gonna explain more about this later. And fifth floor, we have observation deck. This one is like a mini library or waiting room because on the sixth floor, main observatory, um, it, the diameter is around seven meters. So it's quite small. It only can occupy uh, 10 to 15 people at one time. So in case there's a lot of guests, they need to wait on the observation deck. 
So this one is the drone view, aerial view of the, the dome. So this one is solar observatory, it's quite small. Uh, it only can occupy 3% at one time. So if there's another person, so they need to wait on the outside. So this one is the main observatory with open at night. So this one that can occupy uh, 10 to 15% at one time. So this one is our operating uh, hours or entrance fees. So we have two visiting hours like I mentioned before. We have solar observation, which is going to start uh, one hour from now, uh, 3 to 5 p.m. And night observation is from 10.30 p.m. to 12 a.m. So even though we already stated that this one is the fixed uh, time to observe, but it's, it's also depending on the weather condition. If it's cloudy or rainy, we are not open for any observation. And um, we have entrance fees, 25 ringgit per person. But in case you are coming in a group, uh, there's a special price for it. So, and if you are staying at Klana Beach Resort in front of our observatory, uh, you can uh, get a free admission tickets to our observatory at night and for the sun observation. So all reservation and fees regarding tours to VCTK are handled by KBRTD. Uh, okay, I guess this one you guys uh, already know. This is one uh, a solar dome. So we have three telescopes in here, this one. So why we have three telescopes? Uh, because in case any of you have seen moons using telescope, if you're using a um, normal telescope without filter, so actually we can see a lot of features on the moon. We can see the colors, we can see the shape, we can see the craters. But it's different for the sun because uh, we need special filter to see special uh, features on the sun. For example, so this one is the sun, yes. Uh, bear in mind this one is a sun, a real sun. Uh, it's a round, orange and like a ping pong ball. Kids always says this one is like a ping pong ball. So this one using telescope that we call Takahashi. Uh, Takahashi, I repeat Takahashi. Okay. Um, this one, we can observe the first uh, layer of sun atmosphere we call photosphere. So this one, we are looking at the first layer of sun atmosphere we call photosphere. So the next one, in case you are wondering, I want to see the flare from the sun. Yes, you can see, but we are using a different telescope. This one we call Land Solar System, where we're gonna see the second layer of sun atmosphere we call chromosphere. Chromosphere. So why I'm repeating so much time this thing, uh, maybe it's coming up in the quiz. So uh, this one is the flare. You can see using the telescope, but this one is quite difficult to see. It's depend on the sun activity. In case the sun is in the in the minimum stage of activity, so we are gonna see less uh, flares. So this one is the main dome. So we have telescope, which is as uh, mentioned by Harris. This one is the biggest telescope in Malaysia so far which is the diameter is 24 inch, around 0 0.6 meter. So this one is imported from New York. And the name is 24 inch optical guidance system OGS. 24 inch optical guidance system OGS. But in mind why I repeat it twice, maybe, maybe. So this one, what we can see from here, Oh, I love this. This one is the this one is not full moon yet. As you can see, it's not round. So this one we call it waxing gibbous. Um, this one is not exactly what we're gonna see by using twenty four inch telescope. This one is the um, you can see this using even with binocular or small telescope. So what you're gonna see by using OGS is something like this. It's a so close up. So you're gonna see a craters, a lot of craters on the moon. So yeah, it's this one, this one, this one is quite popular craters. So why the moon have craters? Uh, it's because of long time ago. So the moon has been bombarded by the meteor and comet. So that's why they got craters. 
This one is another interesting thing to, to, to observe. Uh, planets, other than moons, we have planets to observe. So three, we have eight planets in solar system. We have but uh, seen clearly from Tulukkama Observatory. So this one is Mars. This one is um, Jupiter. This one is Saturn. Yes. Uh, this one is the most interesting because even though it's smaller than uh, Jupiter, but it got rings. So kids love to see this one. If, um, if the sky is very clear, uh, but there is no moon, there is no planet because uh, there are only certain uh, period that we can see this object. So usually we're going to show you uh, stars, but star is not as... Um, as beautiful as moons or planets. Oh. Oh. That's, that is the end of our first session. A very a short introduction about our place. So in case you have question, you may send to the chat box. I will answer later. So this one I think is the best part. Where I'm going to show you some of astrophotography from BCTK. BCTK stands for Balai Cerap Turut Kemang. So it's a photography technique but we merge with, um, we capture in astronomy things, planets, so that's why we call it as, as astrophotography. So, Oh, okay, I, I think you guys have seen this one. This one is the sun, yes. This one is the sun. Look at the diameter is 1.3 million kilometer from here to here. 1.3 million kilometer. And the distance from Earth is almost 150 million kilometers. So this one is the sun uh, that you look through a telescope that we call Takashi with white light filter. We're going to see something like this. But... Uh, if you are lucky, if the sun is very active, you're going to see this kind of view. We, we have like a dot dot in here. So this one, we call it as a sunspot. So what is sunspot? Sunspot it is, is the coolest part of the sun. So that's why it is darker compared to other, uh, other region of the sky. So even though I say this is the coolest part of the sun, the temperature is almost four to six thousand degrees Celsius. Yeah, that is the coolest part of the sun. So this one and is um sunspot is not always at that particular place. Sometimes they stay for three to five days or uh, seven days. Sometimes if it's so big, they can lasting for one month. And it also depends on sun activity. So if the sun is very active, you're going to see sunspot and flares. So this one is the, the close-up of the sunspot. So actually, um, there's a two region in here. This one is umbra. This one is penumbra of the sunspot. It's so big. Actually, if, if I put a, an earth on here, is we are very, very small compared to the sunspot. So this one, uh, this one is quite special. This one is the view using Land Solar System Telescope where we're going to see um, second layer of sun atmosphere, which is chromosphere. You see this is flare in here, this is flare in here. Compared to the first one, it's quite blank. So this one is the special one. So we're going to see flares. Uh, as you can see, this is quite small. You can the the height so this one almost fifty uh, thousand kilometer this one is I can so I can say is a so so uh, high so this one is our earth compared to this one is so so big even the the sun is so big so this is one is other picture of uh, flares uh, people often come in here and ask can I see the flares um, it depends on sun activity actually. Sometimes there is flare on, oh, okay, so maybe you came at 3, but there is no flare. But after 
30 minutes, maybe this is flare. So this is, sun is like a very giant uh, fireball. So you cannot predict uh, its activity. So sometimes this got flare, sometimes there's no flares. So this one is the comparison of the sun atmosphere. So this one is the first layer. You can see um, very clear of the sunspot. This one is the second layer. So second layer, usually we are not using to see the sunspot. Usually we're going to see the flares. So that's all for sun. Uh, we go, we move to another object. This one is the full moon. Yes, this one is full moon. Exactly. So you're going to see a lot of craters in here. If you are using a binocular or a small telescope like four to six inch, you're going to see this, this kind of view. But in case you are using telescope like on the sixth floor, which is 24 inch, we're going to close up something like this. So I'm going to share you this picture in case uh, you ever heard. This one is we call Copernicus. Copernicus. This one is um, one of the biggest, uh, largest uh, craters on, this, on the moon. So it's named after an astronomer called Nicholas Copernicus. So why so special about this uh, Copernicus? So the diameter from here to here is almost 90 kilometers. So I'm in here in Park Rickson and somewhere of you guys may be in here in Kuala Lumpur. So that is how big is the craters. And this is the example of how big is the impact of meteor or comet. It's so big. So this one is, I think, one of favorite, um, one of people favorite, uh, in case you have heard, um, supermoon, or we call it in astronomy as perigee uh, full moon. So where, where during uh, supermoon, so the, the orbit between Earth and the moon is closer. So we're going to see uh, the moon a bit brighter and bigger. So it's not that the moon is getting big, but the distance is closer. So we're going to see it's uh, brighter and uh, bigger. So this one is one of the uh, latest picture. Do we, we taken in, this one is on 10 March. So actually, supermoon is not a rare phenomena. So it's not a rare phenomena. So it's happened uh, every single year. And sometimes it's happened uh, for a few times. So we move to next one. Okay, ah, uh, can you guess what is this? Uh, yeah, you got names here. Waxing crescent moons. Waxing crescent moon, but actually this one we also call it as new moon. So this one is, this one is the one that Muslim uh, observe to determine the new day of our Islamic calendar. So this one is the latest one, 22nd uh, June, 2020, so last month. So we we seen this one. So that's mean the next day is the, the new day of our uh, Islamic calendar. Okay. Uh, I give you I give you guys 10 seconds to stare at this picture. Where is the where is the moon? Can you guess? Can you guess? Where is it? Yeah, this one. Very thin one. This one is also a uh, waxing crescent moon, but the age is uh, younger. This one, the age is 12 hours. Compared to previous one, this one is almost 30 hours. So the moon age will determine the thickness of the, the moon. So for example, if the moon age is seven days, this is the first quarter. If the moon is uh, 15 days, so we have a full moon like tonight. So tonight is the 15 days of the, the moon. So we're going to see a full moon tonight. And if we are, if we are in the 21st or, or the, the, the moon age is 21, so we are in the last quarter. So that's how we determine the, the moon age and its correlation with the thickness. 
So I would like to say this one is our best record of uh, youngest moons, uh, new moons that we have uh, ever recorded. This one is 12 hours, which is on 2019. Compared to this one, actually, this one is very clear sky. This one will have problem with the cloudy sky, yes. Uh, cloud rains is very affecting our observation and also uh, atmosphere also affecting our our sky. So this one I think people love to see this. Oh, okay. people still love to see this one. So this one is um, collection of planet that we we captured from here. So this one is Venus and we got Mars, we have Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune and the last one is uh, this, this one is Pluto. Yes, it's very small and very small and so far away so it's quite difficult to see, too difficult to capture. This one is our first and last time to capture Pluto. So the, this main three that uh, we usually um, show to gas in here because Jupiter is the biggest planet in our solar system and we got Saturn and its beautiful ring and Mars because it's the nearest one with us. Uranus, Neptune is not, we can observe but it's not um, favorable to see because it's so small. So I go to the next picture. Okay, this one is another close-up of um, Jupiter. So this one, Jupiter and its uh, red giant spot. So for your information, maybe some of you um, already know that um, Uranus, Neptune, Jupiter and Saturn is a gaseous planet. Uh, what, what does it mean? So in case we have space probe and we go to the Jupiter, we don't have any place to land. So it's always atmosphere and down to the core. So we, it's not like Earth or Mars, we have um, like a surface to land. So this one is gaseous planet. So all the, the, the planet is, is actually a storm. So in case you're gonna see with telescope, it's something like this. So this one is the Jupiter, you're gonna see the a line on the on the planet which is its atmosphere and you're gonna see uh, four of its moon we call it a Galilean moon Ganymede, Io, Europa and Callisto so this one is the best view so starting from July which is this month we in here uh, are open to guests to observe these planets and its moon oh, so this one is very cute and small Saturn so Saturn, I can see this one is, is the exact view of the, the planet when using a telescope. We can see the, the, the center of the planet and we can see the ring also. Ah, this one is a bit closer. This one is using our special telescope and our special camera. So that's why we can zoom and then put colors on it. So you can see there's a, there's a uh, different type of ring actually A, B, C, D, F, G. So this one is the ring. You can see the color band of the planet also. But using telescope, we only see something like this. It's so, so small. Uh, this one is our one of our nearest um, planets where Elon Musk so eager to, to, to go in here. So what is so special about this picture that taken in, uh, in 2018? This one is using, uh, this one is during the opposition where the planets uh, and Mars and the Earth is uh, closer. So we're gonna see um, very, very big compared to other months. So as you can see this one, they got a uh, ice cap on the Pole. Yes, uh, on, on Mars they got South and uh, North Pole and they got ice on it. But it's not ice like, like on Earth. So ice on Earth is water, H2O, but most of uh, ice on Mars is methane. So we don't know yet either in Mars they got water or not. And this one is interest another interesting picture about 
As you can see, there's a blue tint on the upper one. So this one is actually an aurora. Even in an, another planet also, aurora is happening. So this one is aurora, but, but it's so, so dim. So maybe some of you cannot see this one. Okay. Maybe uh, some of us, um, how to spot a planet? Just like you say that July until a uh, certain period we can see uh, planets. So if if you guys, uh, so you can try tonight maybe. So look at at the direction of east and between east and south. So there's a two bright star which is uh, is not star actually is um, Jupiter and Saturn. So tonight you, you guys can can try to see, look at, at the east side of, uh, in case you're in your house or something. So look on the east side. So you're gonna see uh, Jupiter and Saturn. So how to differentiate um, planets and stars? So stars is blinking, planet is not. So th that is the different, uh, why stars, uh, how to dif differentiate uh, with naked eyes. Uh, planets and stars. Uh, this one, I, the picture that I want to show. This one is the Mars. So you can see clearly this one is the aurora on the Mars. Both on the north, north and south pole. Okay. Okay. Can you guess what is this? Uh, I, I don't want to... to so this one is the this one is galaxy. So this one is picture that taken from here using our telescope in here. So this one we call it as Andromeda galaxy. Why I choose the picture? So Andromeda is our neighbor. So we have this one is the nearest um, major galaxy to Milky Way. So our own galaxy we call Milky Way or in Malay we call Bima Sakti. So this one is our neighbor. So even though I say it's nearby, so the distance is uh, 2.5 million light year. So it's a, maybe some of you is a new unit to, to measure a distance. So one light year is equal to 9.5 trillion kilometers. So in case you guys still want to count in kilometer, so just uh, times 2.5 million times 9.5 trillion kilometers. So that's the distance between us, Milky Way, and our nearby Andromeda galaxy. Oh, this one, I love this one. This one is a galaxy, it's also a galaxy, we call it Sombrero, Sombrero Galaxy. This one is one, one of, I think, um, like Andromeda. Andromeda, you, if you are in a very dark place or in a forest, you can see this one. It, it's like a um, dim cloud in the sky, but it's, if you are in a uh, um, very uh, bright place, you cannot see this. This one, it's Andromeda. Even this one you can observe by using binocular, but it's, you cannot see this, this kind of shape. It's something like a cloud, very dim cloud on the, on the space. So this one is Sombrero Galaxy. So all this picture is taken from Tulukkama Observatory. So this one is Triangulum Galaxy. So we have a lot of collection of galaxy uh, uh, from here. Oops. Oh, this one is the popular uh, Leo triplet. And, okay, before uh, we got to another two objects. So, the next one is, I can, you guys can see this one is stars. So, it's not, it's not as, as beautiful to see because it's just a, like a dot. This one is using a telescope and a camera. So, we're gonna see a spike in here. So this is God angle. So that's why uh, we as kids draw a star. They got five angles, something like that. It's actually, it's not, 
the star is that shape. It's actually stars is somehow the shape is like our sun. It's uh, brown and got different colors. So the, the, the angle is actually, the spike is actually the brightness from the, the sun, is, uh, the star is stuff. Oh, this one. This one is one of the brightest uh, star in our sky. We call it Sirius. Yes, Sirius Black, like in uh, Harry Potter. And uh, this one is like a trivia maybe. Um, Sirius star in a constellation of dog. And in Harry Potter, Sirius Black can, can transform itself into dog. So, I'm not a fan of Harry Potter, but I, I know a little bit about it. So, this one is, um, this one is not Meteor. It's not in, people often uh, mistaken this with Meteor, but this one is not Meteor. It's actually, what can, what can, can you guess what is this? This one is uh, Star Trek. Star Trek. So, this one is the movement of stars as the Earth rotate on it exists. So we're gonna see this this kind of view. Uh, very beautiful. This one is actually so. This one is actually um is it, to take this kind of picture. You need a very long time and long exposure. So this picture actually actually is um is a stack of hundreds of pictures. So actually this is a dot, tiny dot in here, then we stack all the pictures. So they're gonna, they're gonna make a, a line something like this. So this one is star trace. Is uh, even using your mobile phone right now, even you have, uh, if you have um, pro mode, something like that, you can capture this one. Just you have to stack the, the picture. So this one in the forest. So this one in our our um, dome. Uh, this one I think most of you guys love this. This one is called nebula. Okay, nebula. Nebula is um, gas or clouds or particles in space that form. Um, it's formed from a dead star. But it's also uh, it's a birthplace of a star. So the cycle of star is actually like in the around cycle. So after the star is dead, so almost dead, so supernova gonna happen. So it bursts out and become nebula. So from nebula, the same particle, the same gases, the same element, if there is gravity, so the new star will born. So actually in the middle of this, the very bright star is um, a new star that form from this nebula. This one is a popular Orion nebula. So this one is quite popular, very popular. It's something like, I can say it's something like butterfly maybe or a bird. So this one is another nebula. This one is running man nebula. So running man nebula. Ah, this one is so beautiful. I, even, even kids when see this, this is something like a rose. Yes, the name, even the name is Rosette Nebula. So this one is one of, one of the beautiful, um, beautiful nebula that you can see. Okay, this one, this one is Lagoon and Trifid Nebula. This one you can find or you can find this one on the Milky Way. Okay, so this one is also nebula, but why the shape is quite different. So actually nebula, they got few types of nebula. They got uh, emission nebula, they got absorption nebula, and this one is categorized as um, planetary nebula. So long time ago, so the, the telescope from back in, back in old times is not big. So they see this, this nebula, they thought this one is planet, but it's actually is a planetary nebula. So why there's a different type of nebula? So back to the story. So if, when the stars, star we got, uh, star they have a lot of um, size. They got different size, even 
the star that we see on our sky on the night is bigger than our sun. So sun is one of our stars. So this one is tricky question. In case someone asks you, what is the, the nearest star to Earth? So the nearest star to Earth is our own sun. So our own sun is uh, stars. But in case the question is, what is the nearest star to our solar system? That one is the uh, another stars, which is, we call it uh, Proxima Centauri. So this one is the closest, the closest stars to us, which is the distance is around four light year from here, which is if we are seeing the stars of Alpha Centauri, or Proxima Centauri. So we are looking four year back. So that is how we describe light years. Uh, in case we are seeing a star, so the distance of the star is 60 years. So we are looking at back at the time 60 years ago. So this one is Planetary Nebula. We call it Eskimo Nebula. Why this one is called Eskimo Nebula? In case you can Google up this. This one is like a head of Eskimo people and wearing a paka hood. So that's why it's called Eskimo Nebula. This one is Helix Nebula. This one is quite popular because it's shaped like, like, like the eyes. So this one is often um, mistaken between Helix Nebula and Ring Nebula. So they got the same shape but it's different things. And this one is another type of nebula. This one we call it as Dark Nebula. So this one is the nebula. So why why the color is dark? It's not it's not that it emit a black color. Color is not black color is not emitted. This, this one is because the this region is so packed with particles. Even the light from the behinds of this region cannot be reflected. So that's why we are seeing the 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 black region this one this one is dark nebula so this one is dolphin you can see the shape shape of dolphin this one is also dark nebula so the the, the particle the gases in here is so packed so it's so opaque that you cannot see the stars on the behind so that's why it's it's a black dark nebula this one is just uh, just Picture. Maybe some of you have seen this. This one is we call it sun halo. So this one is not a rare uh, phenomena. Even last night we in here we got to capture a picture of moon halo. So halo is the you can see is this got got color band in here like a rainbow. But rainbow is um uh, is produced by the. Oh, sorry. Uh, is produced by the uh, diffraction or reflection of the water droplet. But sun halo is by the ice crystal in our atmosphere. So usually we're going to see sun halo or moon halo if there's a type of cloud we call cirrostratus. So in case you saw a cirrostratus cloud, probably high chance you're going to see a sun halo. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, gonna back on our track. Okay. So this is our timeline. We have seen suns, moons, planets, galaxy, star or star trees, and last one is nebula. So maybe some of you have a request to see. Ah, I want to see. Um, uh, Orion's constellations, or I want to see my bird star, or something like that. Maybe some of the picture you can browse on our website. So we have our own website, www.bctkpd.com. I leave on the chat after this the the link to our website, so you can browse. There lots of picture on there, so you can you can see from there. So this one, I think this one is our last last one, upcoming astronomy phenomena. So usually every single year we 
uh, going to release this type of um, calendar, which is one year calendar. So this one is, oops. This one is the time to observe the moon. So we have a um, certain period that we can observe moon from here. It's not always the same time. So in case you are interested to see the moon using our telescope on sixth floor, you need to come from 7 to 15th of lunar calendar or Islamic calendar. So that one is the, the best time to see. So in case you came earlier, which is 1 to 6 uh, lunar calendar, you probably going to see anything. You, you cannot see moons. Or if you come after the, the time period, which is uh, 17 to 29th lunar calendar, also, we cannot see uh, the moon. So, this one is the calendar that you need to refer in case you have a plan to come in here. Uh, planets. So, planets, we have Jupiter, Saturn and Mars. We got uh, Jupiter and Saturn actually uh, right now is the best time to observe until October. In case you want to see a Mars, you can come from September to December. So this one is our public event, which is most of it has been uh, postponed or cancelled, which is an hour, this uh, few days, I think a, a one week before COVID-19 KP. So this one, so we've been cancelled. Supermoon also, yes, Global Astronomy Month also, and the next one is September. Yeah, this one also, uh, maybe we, we gonna, we, we want, uh, do any um, event. So this one is eclipse for this year, Penumbra Lunar Eclipse uh, on 11 Jan, Feb uh, Penumbra Lunar Eclipse on 6 June, and last one, last month, which is partial solar eclipse on 21st June. Hopefully most of you guys have seen this partial solar eclipse on the last month because the next time you're gonna see a partial solar eclipse from Malaysia, is on 2023, which is, is quite long time to wait. And uh, this one is, I, I can see this one is um, the, one of the most awaiting moment, meteor shower. So every year we have two prominent meteor shower, which is Perseid on August and Germanid on December. Last year, we are so unlucky because during this, to um, meteor shower, we have a full moon, or we near to full moon, so we have obstacle from this moonlight. So, but not this year. Per se, um, there is still a moonlight, but it's not a full moon. So you can you can uh, try 13 August. Okay, 13 August. Uh, the meteor that you're gonna see, the the average is uh, what 80 to 100 meteors per hour. This one is per seat. So per seat, uh, how, how pe some people may ask, why only at certain time we're going to see meteor shower? So because meteor shower, the origin is from a comet. So for example, per seat meteor shower is uh, from a comet that called Swift Tuttle. So every single year, on August, on the middle of August, we gonna near to the orbit of Comet Swift Tuttle. So the debris from the comet enter our atmosphere and become a meteor. So also Gemini and 14 December, this one is also uh, very interesting. This one, uh, you can see 120 to 140 meteors per hour, but it happened on December. Uh, I think I think in Malaysia and most of our friends in Singapore, we, we are facing the same problem using December, which is in Malaysia, we got monsoon. Uh, December is a raining season. So the chance to see uh, Germany is quite low compared to Proceed. So, but you can give a try. We can give a try both of this, this, uh, this time. So this one is the, the summaries. Uh, all this calendar you can uh, get from our website www.bctkpd.com.
Ah, this one is the next incoming meteor shower. So the next few months, we don't have any prominent um, astronomical phenomena. We don't have eclipse. We don't have um, supermoon, very big supermoon. We don't have. So the best one to to see is meteor shower. And this one can be seen, can be observed throughout the Malaysia, any place. But the one, the place that you need to find is first, you need to find a dark place. Uh, in case you are in KL or Seremban, maybe it's quite difficult to see. Um, in case you love to camping, so you can try on this date, maybe you can see some of uh, meteor shower and you need to find a very um, wide angle of sky. So usually I don't recommend you guys go to the forest or do some hiking to observe the meteor shower because uh, in the forest you got a limit, a limited sky view because of the tree and some sort. So you need to find a very um, wide place so you can observe a more angle of the sky. So this one is the next meteor shower. So we've got Prasid on August. We got Orionids and Leonid. Orionid and Leonid is quite um, it's not popular because the number of meteor per hour is so low. Orionid is around 20, uh, Leonid is around 40. So maybe the chance is quite low to see. And the last one is Gemini on December. So take a chance. Observe this one from your house, from your hometowns. I can bet hometown is the best place to see. In case you are wondering how meteor shower looks like, so you can go to our YouTube channel, uh, Tolok Kemal Observatory. So we have a lot of collection of um, uh, videos such as meteor shower, Milky Way from there. And don't forget to subscribe. Okay, this one is the the last the last uh, slide from uh, Blai Shirab to Kemang. So in our complex, in case you come in here, actually complex by two wheelers, this place uh, called complex by two wheelers, uh, we are we are we have two components actually, Blai Shirab to Kemang and Kerana Beach Resort. So I'm not forgetting to uh, this one I can I can call it promoting oops I'm sorry where is the slide Okay, I'm gonna show you some Okay, this one Okay, in case you guys are interested to come in here This one, Klana Beach Resort Port Eastern. This one is in front of our in front of our Teluk Kemang Observatory. So if you are staying here, uh, you, you will get a free uh, tickets to our observatory. So if you are not staying here, so you need to pay uh, twenty five ringgit per person. Or in case you come in group, uh, there's another uh, charges. So what is so special about our place, our hotel? So even the, the, the tagline is best under the star. So best under the star. So this one is accommodation. As you can see from even the decoration of the room, they got um, an element of astronomy. So the, the pictures, the carpets, even the, this one is the blanket. So we got a special room, few rooms, few limited rooms that have a full decoration of Stars and planets. Uh, Sarah. Yes. Sarah Wuti here. Uh, may I interrupt? Uh, we will yes. uh, due to the time. 
Uh, mm -hmm. we, we can still do the, the, the promotion of our Kalana Resort, mm -hmm. but uh, to our audience, we would like to do the quiz now. Oh, okay. Is that okay? Yeah, All yeah. Right? Because, because the, the, the information of, for, the, for the quiz I have been released. Yes, oh, yes. So um, uh, to everybody, we will start the quiz. So the quiz will last for 10 minutes. It's very simple. And um, especially children, we welcome, uh, especially welcome children to, to participate. Uh, the prizes have been mentioned. Uh, let, let me just send you the link of the quiz. So you can start the quiz and then we talk about the prizes and we can continue uh, Q&A and also any promotional items that uh, Sarah would like to share. Okay, Paulana. Okay, the link is being put into the chat room. Um, Lilian Ping, please help to put onto the uh, Facebook page. Thank you. Uh, basically, the I have the car in front of me here. There are basically three prizes, uh, five prizes in total. The for the, the the five people who finish the quiz with the correct answer or with the highest score um, uh, from those questions. So the, the three prizes, the top three prizes as mentioned, uh, the, the, the frame uh, of the, the Lokamang Observatory and also the keychain and the, um, what else we have? The fridge magnet, okay? And then, so those are, that, that, that consi considers one set and we have three sets given, uh, uh, donated by uh, Sarah's team. And uh, from MNS, we're giving two uh, admission pass passes to um, to the observatory. So for the fourth and fifth prizes, uh, we are giving um, uh, those uh, one pass each, all right? So thank you. So we will come back in about, let me say, eight minutes. We will close the, uh, the quiz. So please continue. Uh, Sarah, thank you. Oh. Okay, thank you, Vuti. So uh, this one is the slide of uh, Kana Beach Resort. So in case you are interested to come in here and you want to find a place uh, to stay. So we got a special prize in case you want to have an um, anniversary celebration. Also, we got a very nice set that even the candlelight dinner is facing the, the, the sunset. It's so nice. The latest picture of um, Candlelight setup is on the Facebook. You can like Facebook Klana Beach Resort. So this one is the package for night sky. So one seven eight per person. So it's actually on the on the on the below we got the the items that we you got one night stay breakfast free admission thanks thanks uh, percent discount and so on. So this one is written gas program. So I I can say that most of our gas in here is a written gas. For example, so for example, you and your team came here for a meeting. So you already saw um, maybe like a moon. So the next time you come, uh, you are already considered as a written gas, and you are bringing a family. So at that time you came, uh, you are seeing a planet. So. Maybe on our calendar, so I want to see a Jupiter. So this one I see Jupiter, and next time you will see Saturn. Then you come again to see the the the, the object. So that that's why we we have this um, promotion for written gas program because most of our gas in here is written gas. They love to come here to, and sometimes uh, we also have a guest that we already know their face because they always come in here. Um, there's a guess that they came three times, but three times they came is always cloudy. So it's so I I am not saying that that person is unlucky, but maybe the time that he he or she came is not the best. So the fourth time she she came or she she very lucky. There's no the, the there's no gas. So that night we can see moon and planets. So for the fourth time she came here. So don't feel don't feel sad or disappointed in case the next time you come in here you didn't see anything. So this one is the latest package which is 98 ringgit only. 
uh, four room. So this one is the the description. You you may refer this one for next time. Maybe for kids or family that want to have um, family time before the school opens for Malaysia. Maybe you can come in here. And this one is uh, our coffee house. We got promotion also. We got promotion for frontliner in case in Malaysia that our view today is we got frontliner. You can have a 20% off. And of course, the last one, we have LT set promotion. So this one, in case I, I'm going fast, you can refer all this, this, um, this information on Kana Beach Resort. Uh, Sarah? Sarah? Yes. Uh, a couple of questions. Yes. Okay, from, uh, from FB, uh, Maria asked, why do stars blink while planets do not? Ah, that one is very famous question. I always get that. Okay. Uh, why stars is blinking and planet is not? So actually, okay, for, your, for you guys, uh, for guys' information, so the stars blinking because of our atmosphere. So in case we are, I'm, or you guys are an astronaut, go to the ISS, International Space Station, and we are seeing the star, the star is not blinking. So for astronaut outside of our Earth, outside of our atmosphere, so they're, they're gonna see uh, the star is not blinking. Why the star is blinking? Because of our atmosphere. So there's a, in our atmosphere, there's a turbulence, there's a different density of air, so there's a uh, like a diffraction of sun uh, diffraction of the light from the uh, stars. So the stars almost all the star in our sky is so far away. So the source of the light is so small. So if the in case you can imagine this one, I I don't know how to how to show you. So in case the diffraction, the because of the difference. Uh, density, you can see the. I think I need to Google the picture. Uh. Okay. This one is quite familiar, but you need to imagine why, why the star is blinking and the planet is not blinking. First, you need to know why the star is blinking. Okay. Oops. I hope I have the times. So share screen. Okay, this one. Okay. Okay. To those who may ask, so this one is why the star is blinking. As you can see, this one. So this one is, you can see the light from the star is so far away, it's so small, the, the source of light. So it's being uh, reflected or refracted to, to the left and to the right. So that's why you're going to see the star is blinking. Compared to our planets, which is planets, why it's not blinking? Uh, first, the distance between Earth and the planet, I can say is, it is still uh, near. Even though Jupiter is 600 million kilometers, it's still near. So the source of light from the planets is big. So if there is a refraction or diffraction of the, uh, the light, so it's so small. So even it's moving on the left or right, it still see the same light. I guess you can imagine this one. Okay, okay this one. Ah, this one is the best, the best view. So the, why the star twinkling? So this one is the stars. So we have layers of atmospheres. So because of the source, of, actually this is the source of the light. Sort of the light is so far away, so it's like a small dot in the sky. So when it's diffracting because of our atmosphere, so we saw it's something like blinking. So compared to our uh, compared to planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, the distance between Earth and the planet is uh, is not too far away. Even we don't use light here in our solar system. So the diffraction is so small. So we didn't see the blinking. It's actually diffracted, but we didn't see the blinking. So that's why we are seeing stars, blinkings, and planets are not. Okay, thank you, Sarah. The second question uh, from 
the Astron Astronomical Society of Brunei. Oh, yes. Um, what is uh, BCTK's uh, long-term plan and future focus uh, priorities, especially for the public? What are okay, your future our, plans? Our long-term and future plans, and for because in here we we are not focusing on research. So maybe some of you guys uh, thought that we have the biggest telescope. So our focus on research, not. Our focus is more on astronomy outreach. So our long term, um, our long term um, plans, or maybe uh, achievement or something like that. We want to more. We want to do more collaboration actually. So more wide uh, range of information can can reach people. Uh, reach people, and. Um, I, I, I'm not saying this one is a good thing because of COVID. So be, this one is the, 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 good, the good side of COVID. Lah. So we are starting using um, something like the webinar and something like that. So we have an interaction from different place of uh, people. So more information can be, can, be, can be sent. And another one is, this one is very important. I think even... Um, Another observatory is fighting for this one is light pollution. We are fighting for um, for uh, we want to um, a law, a law like sub law that preserve the the forest that preserve our ecotourism. So we are fighting for um, a law for light pollution. So at least at least in twenty or ten years from now, there is a dark sky. Reserve in Malaysia. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Yes, uh, regarding the pollution and the development of Port Dixon, we we will talk to you later on because we have some issues coming up. Okay, the another uh, one final question uh, from Go Bong Hyung. What equipment do we need to see Andromeda uh, Galaxy and Nebulas? Okay, those mentioned uh, object is which is. is it's very, very difficult to see with our own eyes. So our own eyes have limitations. So we don't uh, record light like camera does. So most of the picture that we we show you is a uh, is taken from a uh, camera. So what is the best equipment to see? Um, in case you are, I'm focusing on the question of seeing. It's not uh, capturing. Okay, seeing. So Andromeda, if you are in a good location, in a in a in a best location and less light pollution, even you can use a binocular. So the last time I saw Andromeda in here in 2016, I think during my internship. So using binocular. So Andromeda in on the north area. So our problem is not area is Pantai Teluk Kemang, so they got spotlight, so that, that time is the last time I saw Andromeda. Even using a uh, binocular, you, you can see Andromeda, but it's not as as beautiful as the picture. It's something like cloudy and uh, telescope, the best telescope. Any telescope, I guess, can 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 viewing the, the object, but it's not, don't expect the thing that you see is as the same as the picture because our eyes got limits. Even, uh, this one maybe probably most of you didn't notice that the moon got their own colors. They got colors actually, but the colors that we see with our eyes is black and white because our eyes got limitation. It's actually got some gray and greenish uh, uh, minerals on the moon. So actually they got colors, but because of our eyes so we got limit so we didn't see the colors same goes as an, uh, all this deep sky object um one of the brightest um nebula orion nebula you can see with, with your naked eyes but it is actually like a dim cloud most of the thing is you're gonna see like a dim cloud you won't see the exact shape of the nebula or the galaxy so this one is in the context of seeing is not in the context of you are interested in astrophotography. So in astrophotography is another thing. I can say you need to invest. 
Yes, you need, you need to invest in good instrument, good telescope to capture a good picture. Okay, thank you, Sarah. The best is to come and see you, right, at the observatory. Yeah. Okay, so we uh, we now close the um, the the quiz. So, uh, Sarah, could you unshare the screen so I can share the the results? Okay, okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so here we are. Let me share the screen. Hold on, I just difficult to see the screen. So this is the result. Can you all see that? Okay, yeah. Okay, so of course we ignore the first uh, five because we were testing the system <laughs> and we are not eligible. So the first one that came in with uh, full marks, 10 out of 10 is Amirul Hasim. Hey. Okay, well done. The second 10 is <laughs> Yap Kian Wee from Singapore. Oh, congratulations. Okay. Congratulations. And the third 10 is uh, Hazari Ali Ahmad, 67. Uh, He's from, is it from Brunei? Brunei, yeah. Brunei, okay. The fourth, is it up to number four, right? Karina, um, fourth. And the fifth, in terms of fastest speed, is uh, E Sui Neil. Okay, con congratulations to all our five winners, and um, uh, we will contact you for for the for the prizes. Okay, so thank you very much for participating. So Harris, back to you. All right, thank you. Um... Thank you, Sarah, as well, uh, for sharing with us a lot of very interesting information. Uh, you shared with us the packages offered by the observatory, by the hotel, the equipments that we have at the observatory, uh, very nice pictures of the stars, the planets, nebulas, and so on. So um, uh, with that, I think we have come to the end of the session. Sarah, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, for, sh for sharing. Uh, have uh, your, your experience and knowledge with us. Uh, we hope that we can have more sessions. Everyone else, to, to, if you have any questions, yes, please, most welcome. You can come, you can drop any, drop your questions at, uh, at uh, the FB page, or at uh, the MNS FB page, or, or the uh, Observatories FB page. Or the, All right. so, uh, the WhatsApp. And the WhatsApp as well, yes. If you're in the WhatsApp, yes, you can drop your questions in the WhatsApp. So, all right, I guess uh, we wish you uh, the- Harris, uh, one more. Yeah, yes. Okay, uh, everyone, we, on the 18th of July, we are having a special session on the, our famous uh, logo, MNS's famous logo, the, the top tail. Okay. okay, so please look out for that information and we'll see you on the 18th. Thank you, Harris. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Ha enjoy the weekend. Okay, thank you, thank bye you bye everyone. Bye. Thank you, uh, Brunei Islamica Society. Thank you. We are pleased to welcome all of you in here. Yes, okay. Thank you, Sarah. Take care. Bye for now, right. everyone. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye, Bye, Bye. Singapore. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye, Brunei. Bye. Brunei. Bye. We're going international. Very good. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Congratulations. Hello, Goping. Hello, Goping. <laughs> Bye, Bye, everyone. Stay safe. Take care. <laughs>